In this series of Piha Rescue, camera operators are qualified lifeguards, and lifeguards wear helmet cameras. Not only is this their story, it's captured from their point of view. This time on Piha Rescue. A young girl collapses on the beach. Someone give me some info. A mass rescue just outside the flags. Come on! Get her in. And Raglan Rips push the guards to their limits. At Piha, there's a New Year's Day sail on. Veggie shops, watch out. These are quality goods and they're at an unbeatable price. Um, well, we've got about 17 bags here and five bags at home. It took us four hours to pick them all. Yeah. Cool. I'll have a kilo there. <gasps> Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Here's $2 change and your kilo bag. Thank you. With the summer fruit ripe for the picking, holiday makers find a plot to plant themselves. Either pruning in the sun or cooling in the shade. But nothing can compete with the heat of the sand. Oh, real busy. Loads of people in the water. Tides going out, sun's out. Yeah, real busy. Just really busy. Suffice to say, it's busy which translates to... Pretty crap. Tires going out and there's a lot of water to go. Patrol Captain Nick also has concerns. The tires starting to go out, the car's going to start sucking itself pretty strongly. Um, the potential for fear rescues this afternoon. Yeah, well done. Let's take it from the flags. So far, so good. In between the flags on the water's edge, these two youngsters wait patiently for the ripples to reach them. Then suddenly, an emergency. A woman is unconscious at the water's edge. It is not clear what has happened. Vitals, look at the ambo. Lifeguard Tim is first to assist. Chode rushes down with the first aid kit. The woman falls unconscious again. Someone give me some info. Yeah, one casualty, status two. Uh, she is still breathing, she just collapsed on the beach. Okay, that's fine. No, 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 you're not. You're not. You're not. Yeah, still breathing, still breathing. Her condition is critical. To make matters worse, the lifeguards have no idea why this young woman has suddenly collapsed. Just getting vital signs now, I've got her on oxygen. If you could get a uh, request west back at this stage. Over. Yeah, all copy. Uh, any, other, any other vitals for me? Breathing is short and shallow. Yes, that's on Piha. 
uh, we're requiring ambulance and Westpac helicopter on standby for a status two female patient uh, just pulled from the water, unconscious, barely breathing. Some details emerge. Well, I just asked the family, these guys here said she was swimming and she just got rolled over and over and breathed in some water. So, yeah, they, they just told us that she collapsed. Collapsed. Piha Surf Club's medical officer Jonathan arrives. <coughs> She's just been molded. She was completely unconscious, unconscious, and the horse was hanging from her out. Right, breathing was. Uh, sort of was there, but she wasn't moving much here. The woman passes out again. At Piha, lifeguards are trying to ascertain what's wrong with the woman who passed out in the surf. After five worrying minutes, the young lady starts to come around. Remember what happened? Remember the whole thing? Surf on Piha, just to update for you, patient is now status three. She has regained consciousness and is now talking to lifeguards. We are currently transporting her from the beach to the Piha first aid room. Uh, I think she was in the water, but I don't know if she got, you know, she collapsed because of the water or something else happened and she just fell in the water. We're not really sure. But she's going to hospital anyway, just because she's been unconscious. An uneasy start to the year. She was only in knee-deep water, but still, this woman almost drowned today. Her husband and friend join her in the medical room. Do you remember what happened? I was wrong to the beach. I was very scared of water. I can't control my... I can't control my body. Piha's first response arrives. They check her vital signs, body temperature, Pulse rate, blood pressure and respiratory rate. What's, what's Lucky's swimming ability like? Can she swim? She's a non-swimmer, so, yeah. Yeah, they'll have to um, just run some tests to try and find out um, why she collapsed. Um, could be fainting, um, could be something to do with her blood pressure, uh, which is also linked to, to fainting. Um, she's a non-swimmer. So there's a um, very slim chance that this could actually uh, have been, been drowning, um, which doesn't seem very plausible because they're only in waist deep water, but um, it's different when you're talking about non-swimmers, so um, they can succumb to the effects a lot quickly than, a lot more quickly than what swimmers can, so. The first response team finish their initial tests. Lucky is given time to recover and now waits for the ambulance. A hundred kilometres south, Raglan. Like Piha, the weather is beautiful, but this beach is less crowded. For the lifeguards, though, it's a similar story. There's a rescue in between the flags. How's it going, guys? It's story, Bill. Oh, this one was just swallowed a lot of water out the back. Why's that here? We'll look after you, OK? Just make sure you're right. Yeah, I was just standing in the shallows and I thought there was somebody, a uh, guy bringing in this woman. She looked as though it doubled over and taking stuff in, so I just ran out and asked what the story was and he's, she said she's taking a lot of water. What happened? I was in the surf and I ended up swallowing some water and then ended up stopping breathing. Like came up again and then stopped breathing and just collapsed into the water and then my mates came along in lifeguards. You okay on your feet? I think so. Patrol Captain Isaac prepares the oxygen. It's pretty scary though, because it's happened at the pools before as well. My mate ended up pushing me in and I stopped breathing because of my asthma. Are you comfortable in water? No. You don't panic at all? No. no. I'm pretty much a water baby, so... Okay. <laughs> Lifeguard Aubrey checks her over. All right, I'm just going to take all the your lungs, just read in what they say. Because, yeah, this is the second time it happened today, and, you know, I feel So it happened like, earlier today? Yeah. Okay. And I wasn't as bad. Okay. So, breathe in. 
in my head. Are we able to get you changed and warm and dry? And we might just keep you up here for a little bit longer and um, just monitor you for a bit. Thankfully, she's in the clear. Back at Piha, the ambulance arrives to take Lucky to hospital. But there's a slight hiccup. It's against our advice for Lucky not to go through the hospital. So you've got the paramedics, you've got the to nurse as well. So yeah. our advice is better safe than sorry. It's only a short trip. Why don't trip. you want to go to the hospital? Short trip to. Why Edison. don't you want to go to the hospital? Because I'm fine. I just care yeah. to the water. What you need to do is go and have it checked out, like I say. I'll do an x-ray, and if the x-ray comes back clear and everything else is looking good, you'll be sent home. I have to bear my knees. No, ACC will be covering this because it's an accident. All right, you didn't mean to have this happen to you. It's an accident. Finally, she agrees to go. A sudden loss of consciousness like this always needs further medical attention. In Raglan, the asthma patient has recovered too. She decides to call it a day. So you're feeling all right in yourself at the minute? Feeling a bit better? Yeah, just a bit heavy-legged. Can't okay. We'll, uh, we'll take you up in the rhino, eh? Okay. And drop you off in the car. Back at Piha, the lifeguards face the most dangerous part of the day, the outgoing tide. I think he's got fun, so he's hoping he does. Non-swimmers should only go out knee-deep. Can you go get in the boat and just go and sit on that thing? That's going to be yeah, in like two minutes. Give them your radio. Go, Tom, you're with him. And just go sit on that flag. Take a whistle with you. Yeah, got it. What's going on? Hustle, go, run. Patrol Captain Nick isn't taking any chances. The northern side of the flags is where he can see potential problems. He orders IRB crew Chris and Rob to sit next to the flags. As Nick predicted, people drift northward almost immediately. try to swim back between the flags under their own steam, others urgently need help. And there's more than one swimmer who needs a pickup. Get her in. IRB driver Chris can see several more people in trouble. He throws a rescue tube to keep them afloat until he can get the boat back out. Gonna be all right? Gotta get you to lay up. Come forward a little bit for me. Another hand up. Radio's Nick for assistance. And the mass rescue continues. At South Piha, a flash rip is causing havoc for the lifeguards. You go up there and on the PA system and just will make an announcement and get everybody to get out of the water and then walk and then get back in. Because if people try swimming, they're in trouble. Like, we'll be picking up people with their phones center. Patrol Captain Nick knows he needs to move the flags fast. Do you want to chuck it to Just pick them up.
lifeguards look, people fight their way back to shore or scream for help. Attention all beachgoers. This is the Pihar Regional Lifeguard Service. Due to the dangerous conditions that are starting to form where the current flagged area is, we will be shifting our flagged area to the southern end of the beach. Uh, when we do this, I ask that everyone please exit the water. Everyone is to get out of the water and walk along the beach before entering the water again. No one is to try and swim between where the flagged area is now and where the flagged area will be. Walk in. Go in. Further out, even more panicking swimmers need rescuing. Come on, man. Come on. And just when order seems to be restored, one more pickup. Shut your hands up, you're right, bro. No, no, this one, this one, this one. In the space of five minutes, the outgoing tide turned this previously safe beach into one full of dangerous rips. At Raglan, more trouble. This time, three people are caught in a rip. Tube swimmer Ryan swims out first. Aubrey and Matt follow in the IRB. Teenagers are now safe. Two in the IIB and one secured with a rescue tube. Uh, uh, detail. Yeah, what are you guys up to? Do you want to drop those patients off and then uh, just go back up, Ryan? Yep, we'll back them off in front of the tower.
with their passengers now safe on dry land, Aubrey and Matt head back for the boy. What happened there, girls? Hello? What happened there? Uh, the waves were just... Oh, that was quite big. Did you start out at the bags? Yes, I think we did. Hmm, patrol captain Isaac's not so sure. The trio were about 100 metres outside the flagged area. Today you've got to keep yeah. an eye back on the beach, just make sure you're not drifting down the beach because yeah. you can see how far you've drifted at in uh, not too long. And so ends a reasonably quiet day at Raglan. And a not so quiet day at Piha. Three days later, Lucky pays a surprise visit. Oh, yes. Yes. Chode. This time, bearing gifts. Trevor, this is our first aid. Um, hi. Hey, how are you going? I'm good. Good? Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, this is for you guys. Thank you. And as quickly as she appeared, she disappeared, but has shown her gratitude to the guards for saving her life. Oh, at least 20 chocolate bars. I mean, nice little reward for the boys. Yeah, that's so, that's so cool. Yeah. They don't often, no, everyone often come back to thank you. Like, you just see them, you see them off in the ambulance and then you never quite know what happens to them after that. So, awesome to just see that she actually has come back and that she's, she's well. Yeah, good outcome. Next time on Piha Rescue, a young Frenchman pushes his limits too far. The easiest rocks to climb. Unfortunately, he's uh, injured himself halfway up. And near drowning at Hot Water Beach. But if you guys weren't around, I might have panicked and maybe drowned. And a teenager struggles to stay alive beside a sinking kayak.